So you're in Florence and you're thinking, I have got to climb the dome of the Duomo or the Florence Cathedral. And you'd be right, it is an amazing climb and offers spectacular views of the city. But did you know that there are two other towers that you could climb here? So in this video, we are gonna go over the three main towers that you can climb in this Renaissance city. We'll be sharing the pros and cons of each of these towers, tell you how to climb them, tell you what it's like to climb them, and at the end of this video, we're gonna share with you our favorite tower to climb, and you might be surprised at which one we pick. Let's start with the obvious one, the Duomo, Florence's must-see site, the cathedral that dominates Florence's skyline with Brunelleschi's astounding dome. This dome is very popular to climb and tickets sell out long in advance, so you really have to plan if you want to climb this dome. So to climb this dome, it's a bit different from the procedure for climbing the dome at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. There, you can just walk up, purchase your tickets, and go up. You might find a little bit of a wait, but you wait in the line and you go up and that's it. So to access this dome, you need a ticket that's called a Brunelleschi Pass. Filippo Brunelleschi was the architect who designed the cupola. And I'm gonna tell you about that in just a minute. First, I wanna tell you how to get this pass. And I did say it's a pass, which means that it includes more than one site, and I'll also go over that in a minute. There are exactly two ways to purchase the Brunelleschi Pass, which will allow you to climb the dome. The first way, and what we strongly, strongly suggest, is to buy this pass online. In the description below, you'll find links to the official site for booking this pass. The other way that you can purchase the Brunelleschi Pass is on site. I cannot stress enough how much we discourage your buying this ticket on site. First of all, you risk encountering huge lines and wasting precious time on your vacation. Second, and worst of all, you risk not finding availability. They run out of spots and you may find in high season that there literally are no spots available for the time that you're in Florence. So, moral of the story, book ahead, book ahead. Hey guys, if you are enjoying this video, would you please go ahead and hit that like button below? Apparently, it really helps with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing as well. As I mentioned, I would tell you a little bit about Filippo Brunelleschi. That's not the subject of this video, but you should know who he was. Filippo Brunelleschi was an architect here in Florence in the 1400s, and he participated in a contest with Lorenzo Ghiberti for who of the two of them would design the dome of the cathedral, which is called Santa Maria del Fiore. Needless to say, Filippo Brunelleschi won this contest and he designed this dome. The dome is absolutely amazing and one of the amazing things about it is that nobody today actually knows how he did it. If you're interested in learning more about Brunelleschi and his dome, I really recommend the book Brunelleschi's Dome by Ross King. Also, your Brunelleschi Pass comes with entry to the Museo dell'Opera del Duomo, which is a museum all about the Duomo or the cathedral. And in that museum, you will learn a lot more about the dome and Brunelleschi. All right, so what is it like to climb this dome? First of all, this climb includes 463 steps. As you climb these steps, you realize, wow, these are the original steps that the workmen used between 1420 and 1436 when they built this masterpiece. Of course, back then, they never considered that tourists might one day climb these steps. So the steps are pretty steep and the passageway is quite narrow and it's a pretty difficult climb, I have to tell you. But there are windows and there are some spots along the way where you can stop and catch your breath. So it is manageable if you don't have any conditions that prevent you from climbing this dome. One of the many benefits of climbing this dome is that the stairs going up are different from the stairs going down. And of course, the best benefits of climbing this dome are what you will see. First of all, you will get right up close to Vasari's fresco of The Last Judgment. Second of all, from that level, you can look down into the church and see it from above, which is really special. I should add that this pass, the Brunelleschi Pass, allows you access to the dome, but it does not allow you access to the cathedral itself from ground floor level. However, as you descend and make your way out of the dome, you will get to see a little bit of the cathedral from that vantage point. And of course, the number one benefit of climbing this dome is to see the beautiful sweeping views of Florence all around you. Moving on to the second tower, you can climb the Campanile di Giotto, which means the bell tower of Giotto. Giotto began the construction of the bell tower in 1334. After he died, it was eventually completed in 1359. This tower has slightly fewer steps than the Duomo. There are 414 steps in Giotto's Campanile. 
like the Duomo, you really should book this in advance as opposed to trying to come and buy tickets on site. However, it's slightly less popular than the Duomo, so you might be able to find tickets closer to your dates. As with the Duomo, the Campanile does have a few stops along the way where you can catch your breath. In fact, at the Bell Tower, there are three middle floors where you can really stop and look around and also enjoy what's on the floor itself. One drawback of the Campanile is that the stairs going up are the same as the stairs coming down. So this could be a little bit harrowing if it's really crowded, if it's really hot, but otherwise it is a fantastic climb. One of the benefits of climbing the Campanile is that you can actually look down and see the Duomo from there. Think about it, when you climb the Duomo, you have this amazing view of the city, but you can't really see the Duomo itself, or rather you can't see the dome itself because you're standing on it. But from Giotto's Campanile, you really do have a bird's eye view of that dome. A second benefit of climbing the Campanile is that it's a much easier ticket to get at the last minute if you didn't book ahead. Earlier I spoke about the Brunelleschi Pass. As I mentioned, the Brunelleschi Pass offers you access to the dome, but it also offers access to other things as well. Included in the Brunelleschi Pass is also access to Giotto's Campanile. It also gives you access to the Battistero, the baptistry. It gives you access to Santa Reparata, which is the ancient church underneath Santa Maria del Fiore, or the Basilica. And it gives you access to the Museo dell'Opera del Duomo, as I mentioned before. I remind you, and it's important to note, that there is no skip the line pass for entering the Duomo itself. Even if you have a pass that allows you access to the dome and access to the ancient church underneath the cathedral, the only way to access the cathedral is to stand in line because it is a free site and everyone must stand in that line. So the Brunelleschi Pass is really the most complete pass because it gives you access to everything. There are two other passes that are each a step down from the Brunelleschi Pass, which is the most complete of the three. The Giotto Pass allows you access to all the sites I mentioned, minus the dome. And the Ghiberti Pass allows you access to all the sites I mentioned, minus the dome and the Campanile di Giotto. One of the benefits of these passes is that it gives you more than one day to see all of the sites on the pass. For example, the Brunelleschi Pass gives you three full days to visit all the sites on the pass. But you could visit them in one day if you really wanted to. All right, to talk to you about the third tower you can climb here in Florence, I'm coming to you from the Piazza della Signoria. Piazza della Signoria may be one of the most famous, most visited piazzas in Florence. And as you can see, Piazza della Signoria has a tower called the Torre di Arnolfo. The Tower of Arnolfo takes its name from the architect Arnolfo di Cambio, who was an important personality in medieval Florence. The tower was built at the beginning of the 14th century. It acted as a defensive structure, but also as a prison. It takes its name from the palazzo behind me, which is Palazzo della Signoria. To access the Torre di Arnolfo, you go inside of the Palazzo Vecchio, or Palazzo della Signoria. As with the other two towers, you can purchase tickets in advance, or you can purchase them on site. Because this tower is less known and less popular, you could consider it probably the easiest of the three to get tickets for at the last minute. On the other hand, it does sell out, so if you really want to climb this tower in high season, I do recommend booking in advance. This tower is unrelated to the other towers, and it's got a separate place to book. In the description below, I've linked to the official site where you can book your tickets. You could visit the tower on its own, or you could combine it with a visit to Palazzo Vecchio, which I highly recommend. As you climb this tower, you will come across a small prison cell. The prison cell was called L'Alberghetto. Two of its most famous prisoners included Cosimo I, or Cosimo the Elder, de Medici, and Fra Girolamo Savonarola. He was a Dominican friar who was executed in this square. This tower is relatively easy to climb for a few reasons. First of all, it's the easiest of the three to get tickets for, even at the last minute, although I still do recommend booking in advance. Second of all, this tower has only 233 steps, making it the easiest of the three towers to climb. Now, in just a minute, I'm gonna tell you my favorite tower to climb in Florence, and Alessandro's gonna tell you his as well. Let me just finish by giving you our quick tips for climbing these towers. Each tower takes around 30 to 60 minutes to climb, so in theory, you could actually do all three of them in one day if you have the time and energy. You know that I always say to dress comfortably for sightseeing, but in particular, when you're climbing these towers, you wanna to be really comfortable, especially where shoes are concerned. 
No matter what time of year you're climbing, I do suggest bringing with you a small bottle of water. And speaking of time of year, I really recommend against climbing these towers in the height of summer when it is really, really hot. On the other hand, you should know that when it rains, they close this tower, so you will not be able to climb this in the rain. Next tip, definitely book these in advance. Any one of the three, certainly the Duomo and the Campanile di Giotto should be booked in advance. And you can buy a pass, as we mentioned. If some of this sounds a little daunting to you, having to book the tickets and facing the climb on your own, I highly recommend considering booking a tour. When you book a tour, they take care of getting the tickets for you, they take you on the climb, they explain everything to you, the history, etc. And usually it's combined with another site. And in the description below, I've got links to some of those tours. A few more tips, bring binoculars. Also, if taking a really good picture is important to you, I suggest bringing a quality camera as even the really good smartphone cameras just don't quite do the trick for taking those pictures of sites that are far in the distance. Finally, take your time. This is not a race. At all three of these towers, you can stop, catch your breath, even get some views. So take your time and enjoy the climb. And now I'm going to tell you what my favorite tower is to climb. And if I could only climb one tower in Florence, which one it would be. Before I do that, Alessandro is going to tell you his favorite tower to climb. For me, it's exceedingly easy. It's the Brunelleschi Dome. First of all, when you are half away to the top, you will stop at this beautiful site, which is the ring around the Vasari fresco. For me, it's daunting and excited at the same time. And when you're ready to catch your breath, to put all your effort to reach the dome, then you have the real challenge, because you think you're going to reach a beautiful spot, but you're not. The fact that you're under the big lanterna or lantern, that makes you thinking that this, this is just a unique piece of art. Yet the architecture and the panorama, the scenario takes the spot. And this is what is really, really exciting about this climbing to me. All right, I do agree with Alessandro. Climbing the dome of the Duomo or the cathedral is exciting and unique. But I'm going to tell you my favorite tower to climb, and you might be surprised by which one it is. If I had only time and energy to climb one tower in Florence, it would be this one. And here's why. This tower has the fewest steps of all three of the towers, 233 steps, making it a fairly easy climb. Also, as I mentioned, it's pretty easy to get tickets even at the last minute. But leaving aside the booking process, I still would climb this tower if I had to pick one because you get the best views of the Duomo from here. Think about it, when you're on top of Santa Maria del Fiore or the Florence Cathedral, you can't actually see the dome of the cathedral. But from here, you can not only get the best view of Florence's cathedral, but you still get wonderful 360 degree views and it's relatively uncrowded up there. So that's my take. And for more videos about Florence, check out our Florence playlist right here.